The amount of things players can do for fun and money in Star Citizen is increasing quite a bit this year. The missions we discussed last month are being implemented, actual component salvage is being discussed, commodity prices are actually changing, and server meshing T0 is actually being talked about. This report has a lot of good news that just continues the trend of 2023. Things are looking good for Star Citizen gameplay. Let's talk about it. And for your last chance to win a Corsair multi-crew exploration ship, which I'm giving away on February 16th, stick around until the end of the video. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. Starting out with AI features teams, January saw work on AI abilities to recognize, attack, and defend areas. In the most basic sense, this dictates a specific area an NPC can target and remain in defense of. This is meant to build pressure in situations in which players find they are being hunted or ambushed by AI, as well as times when they need to infiltrate a heavily guarded area. A feature that will help with missions in the future, but is very likely a heavy necessity for Squadron 42. Last month, the AI tech team fixed up some bugs with the AI driving feature developed at the end of last year, better preparing it for level designers to implement the feature. They also progressed on AI abilities to use trains and elevators to navigate the world for different reasons. The feature that allows AIs to perceive threats through audio and visual stimuli and vehicles was completed, and work started on the ability for NPCs to avoid or prefer certain paths based on a navigation cost that can be applied to any material in the game such as fire or water in the negative sense, or sidewalks in the positive. Okay, the ships section, featuring art. No, really, this is the art section. There are quite a few new vehicles being worked on for the game, though. That all-new read, not unannounced, but all-new small ship we saw last month, reached LOD0 in some places, which is the highest level of art detail. They also began exploring a variant for the same ship. This could be any number of things, though my friend the Astropub believes it could be a racer from RSI. But you can learn more about that theory in his recent video linked down below. But I'm more interested in the Argo SRV that is undergoing the polish phase myself. The Crusader Spirit also continued to be developed with the A1 reaching the gray box phase. From recent teases, leaks, and progress reports, it's looking like the A1, C1, and E1 Crusader Spirits might all have their gameplay when they come in this year. An unannounced ground vehicle seems to be making progress through the final art phase, and the US team completed white box work on another in-production vehicle, which isn't new or unannounced. So it could be any number of older concepts as well. Another ship that we don't have much detail on entered the gray box phase, and finally, an all new vehicle entered gray box, again, that's not unannounced and could be any number of things. On the engine side of things, mostly things I don't understand. But where I do understand, it looks like the Gen 12 renderer is already beginning to be optimized past what was initially implemented into the PTU last year. Preparations are also beginning for Vulcan integration. In the core engine, the remote shader compiler improvements we heard about last month saw more progress, and work was more done to support v2 of the pack files introduced at the end of last year. Features. Now things start getting interesting for the month. And this section is massive this month, so buckle in. First, the Arena Commander Features team, recently introduced properly on Star Citizen, has recently finished up work on adding an actual physical placeholder for the planet Green from the Ellis system. No, this doesn't mean the Ellis system is being worked on, it's just a little something else to look at. But this closed track will now simulate atmospheric ship racing in a private environment, which ever since its implementation back around 2014 hasn't been true. This will be in addition to a large number of other courses that can also be found throughout the full Persistent Universe. The Arena Commander game mode is also undergoing a change on the front end with, I believe, more work to be done. The Character Features team worked on the Player Skills feature, which will track certain player activities and actions to improve certain aspects of their performance. For example, a player with a higher level of fitness from running around a lot may have more stamina. 
This is a system similar to something like GTA 4, and in my opinion could possibly take a bit away from the idea of player skill and decision making being the primary focus in Star Citizen. But this report isn't a place for my opinion. If you want to hear my full take and discussion with the Astro Pub on the topic, I'll link a clip from our recent podcast episode below. The EU Gameplay Features team continued work on the tractor beam feature. Specifically, this time, the idea of escaping a tractor beam and how ships could affect the necessary strength to do so. Love me some Andor. This is actually a pretty big deal, but not as big a deal as the fact that the team is also working on the tractor beam's ability to detach and attach items. Doesn't sound super significant, but it opens the door for the mining bags to be used in refining gameplay and transferred to cargo ships, weapons to be removed and stolen or repaired, and... The big one, components to be salvaged. This is the actual salvage gameplay people have been waiting for. What will out-earn hull scraping and likely even vehicle munching coming later this year. This is going to be a major step in advancing a lot of gameplay, and between the progress on this and the SRV, things are looking good for 2023. Though there's no knowing when those knock-on additions I talked about will actually happen. The team also further solidified the full gameplay of a ship engineer, determining the possible malfunctions and dangers a player would have to face in a ship to keep it running. The mining balance update we dove into last month also continued, and the features team worked with missions to get salvage missions into the game. In the US, the gameplay features team focused on the continued cargo refactor, designing missions for cargo gameplay. This includes using boarding functionality and soft death to supply both lawful and unlawful cargo-based missions. Investigations and design work started on ship insurance changes, taking into account ship towing and repair coming into the game soon. And tasks were also started on changing the availability of commodities and ore to supply better pricing around the game based on the locations you're visiting. The majority of the missions feature team's month went into designing and prototyping new missions. How about that? For salvage, we've been made aware that these industrial-style missions will be split into lawful contracts in which you pay a fee and are given the location of a supplied shipwreck, unlawful timed missions where you are given the location to a wreck that is not yours requiring a quick job or risking hostiles to come and interrupt you, and a lawless mission in which the general information of a large shipwreck is supplied to the public and any players can make their own claim to the location. This obviously could lead to teams taking control, strangers working together, and other emergent gameplay encounters, and seems like a pretty good way to run missions. The way I see it, these missions will introduce and teach players about the various game mechanics Star Citizen has, give them a taste of how it works in an emergent environment, and leave the players ready to do it in the verse on their own in a sandbox situation. This structure sounds great, now we just need to see the supporting systems. The team also is including a mission in which players restore a ship rather than deconstruct it, if you're into that sort of thing. Now a similar structure to those salvage missions is being implemented with mining missions as well. So industrial players all around should soon have easier to commit to packaged gameplay in multiple different styles in the near future. The team also developed larger missions for the Orison City platforms. These will build upon the FPS missions coming in 318 and add more narrative missions that task a player with recovering some stolen goods for Crusader Industries, owner of the city. Lastly, a few other missions progressed for the Bounty Hunter V2 feature, which could see a similar structure to what we've seen in Industrial earlier. The in-game branding team continued on their work updating the cities to better inform players. This goes towards the new player and existing player experiences, and January seemed to focus mainly on the Loreville skyline before beginning to prepare for Invictus launch week in May. January had the locations team working on, of course, Pyro's Ruined Station. This place is sounding very big based on the work being done, and will hopefully offer an environment as diverse and interesting to explore as somewhere like Orison or New Babbage, as this is the sole landing zone in the second star system in the game, Pyro. The EU Locations 2 team progressed with the local law office we talked about last month, and the Sandbox teams further developed colonial outposts and underground facilities. 
Last month, I said I hoped we would hear that these new locations, the underground facilities, were going from conceptual to production in hopes that we would see them in-game this year. Now, with confirmation production is actually ramping up on them, I'm much more confident it could happen. Narrative began the year working with design teams on scripting for mining and salvage missions we read about earlier, and continued developing the stories that drive the investigation missions forward. The environment and design teams provided updates on new locations meant to support bounty hunting. Narrative also began looking into mission givers again, I hope with the goal of updating them starting after 4.0. And story-based missions began to see work that could be placed around landing zones and cities to provide additional small-scale content to players. The team also made clear the work they normally publish as lore pieces on the website every week would actually be resurrected as in-game stories and news updates. So it's possible we start seeing news channels, fictional stories on data pads, and other bits of world building to bring life and history to the game. Clearly there's a ton of effort going into adding context and meaning to the various things we can do in the game now. Missions and lore for days. The online services team in Montreal rounded out the team responsibilities and tasks needed for server meshing tier 0 to enter the game. This is the first time we're hearing about the feature addressed directly in these reports, I believe. I'm interested in seeing how talk surrounding it changes throughout each month. To top off the mind-blowing list of two older ships being worked on in the monthly report, the Hull C is continuing to see work on animations surrounding its unique setup. The UI team helped with the Squadron 42 star map, which will eventually make its way into the PU. The current work is focusing on grids, coordinate systems, planets and markers, and visual polish. It's definitely finishing up on the Squadron 42 side, but who knows how long that means for Star Citizen. VFX began pre-production on new locations, including the redone rock caves and a particular huge underground facility, which is a bit unexpected. And that does it for January. The amount of progress surrounding missions, new professions, and the features that support them can't be understated, I think. Vehicle tractor beams, the cargo refactor, updated commodity pricing, and new locations are also starting to look really promising this year. We're looking at a good year for diversified gameplay, and I'm excited to keep reporting the progress from these reports to you every month. If you like these kind of progress updates and wanna know what's coming up in the next couple of quarters, subscribe for more of these. And check out the full playlist of every monthly report following Star Citizen if you're curious as to what's going on. Make sure to go back and find that secret code in here if you didn't that will net you more entries in my Corsair Star Citizen game package giveaway. This is a pretty solid ship to take out with some friends and make some money with. And this week is your last chance to enter. So check the link in the video description and get all your entries in. All supporters will be given all secret codes at the end, so don't worry about it. I hope you learned something new in this video and I'll catch you in the next.